good evening. Welcome to Dylan Talks Tone, Just Gonna Say It Podcast. This is a different time and a different, well, not a different place, same place as last time, just different time. So we got some crazy things going on over the next couple of weeks, and uh, I wasn't going to be able to do a podcast on Tuesday, so I figured, you know, instead of not doing a podcast, let's just do it at a different time. So here we are on a Saturday night at 8 p.m. Eastern time. Thank you so much for coming and hanging out with us. Uh, We'd like to welcome you all to the podcast. Uh, A couple things before we get going here. Um, I would like to mention that we've got some new stuff on the website. Um, we've got our all of our electronics components. So if you buy pickups from us, or if you don't, if you just need pots and caps for your Strat or your Tele or your Les Paul or your SG or whatever, uh, you can go over there and you can buy that stuff. We've got some CTS stuff. We've got Born stuff coming, uh, orange drop caps. We've got uh, oil field capacitors. We've got all kinds of cool stuff. So uh, come and check it out for sure. And I also want to say uh, welcome to anybody who is seeing this because maybe they can't come to the normal or don't get to see it live on Tuesday. So maybe we do it at a different time and it's a little bit of a weirdo time and all of a sudden a whole bunch of people get to come. So that's pretty cool too. The other thing I want to mention is uh, Patreon supporters and YouTube members. Thank you for supporting the channel. That's how we keep going really uh that's how all this stuff happens you know reviews and that kind of stuff so thank you so much for that um and uh, yeah that's that's basically it let's get into this conversation shall we i'd like to know your thoughts on this um thumbnail that we shared tonight the uh the whole thing about the money grab this i hear this all the time um oh one more thing i want to mention patreon related is we're not going to have our patreon hangout on monday night we're actually we do it the fourth monday of every month that falls this coming monday the problem is is that i'm going to be in colorado uh teaching people to wine pickups so uh we're going to bump that a week okay um i also should say if you order stuff from the website and we have it in stock stuff is still going to be getting shipped while i'm gone so this is something new for us to have um, my daughter Brianna working with us and um, able to ship those aforementioned parts that we just talked about. So don't worry about that. We got lots of stuff in stock and uh, we're ready to go. So, um, okay. The money grab of limited editions. What do you all think? Are limited editions a money grab? I don't like that term. The reason I don't like that term is because I think it's a negative, kind of a negative connotation. Um, It comes up a lot with the special edition stuff, right? So we've got the $50,000 something and then the $15,000 something. Like if you, if you think about now I've got the (laughs) more affordable versions of some of this stuff, but let's think about some of these guitars. So we've got uh, the Mike McCready Strat, there was a, pub, a custom shop version of that thing that was 15 grand, right? We've also got the Dave Grohl custom shop um, guitar that, you know, was, it was, it was up there too, right? It was 15,000 bucks or ish or something like that. And so, you know, all this stuff is, is fairly expensive. Um, we've got, I mean, there's other crazy weird ones too, like, uh, the Everly Brothers acoustic guitar, um, man, all kinds of crazy stuff. Elvis stuff, and they sell out every time. Everybody says, "Oh, this is a money grab," and this is the dumbest idea ever. You know, it, that's what the that's what the peanut gallery comment sections say on the internet. But they sell out every time. So I want to kind of talk about that and kind of think about why I personally think um, that all this limited edition stuff is good. I think it's good for guitar land. I think it's good for all of us. Um, It's got me, the the couple, the last couple uh, foreign made signature guitars that I've I've gotten um, have been very, very good. And they've been making me think about this subject a lot because the, um, the Dave Grohl 
just spoiler alert, that video comes out Monday, but the Dave Grohl spoiler, the Dave Grohl uh, signature at 335 is freaking amazing. It's the best Epiphone I've ever had. Um, the Machine Gun Kelly Schechter, fantastic guitar. I absolutely love that thing. Um, that one's, you know, made in Asia and it's a, you know, it's not, it's not like a custom shop thing or anything. Uh, and then of course the made in Mexico, um, version of the Mike McCready Strat phenomenal guitar. Those three guitars are probably some of my favorite guitars, maybe ever. Um, and they are of course, affordable versions of limited editions that came out as very expensive editions prior to that. Uh, but of course this has got me thinking about all this. Um, so you know what, before we get into this stuff, I want more regular editions that are actually interesting. Well, we're going to get into that. Um, that's something that I think about. Uh, if it's something that, uh, that, that whole thing, regular editions of something that are interesting. What does that mean exactly? Um, Besides that we can't ever make guitar players happy. Limited editions are more for collectors than players, but you can still play it, so it doesn't matter. Play a limited edition, doesn't matter. Um, are, you use, are we using special edition limited run and signature limited as meaning the same thing? Um, I don't know, what do you think? Um, this is, I'm just kind of giving you the things that I've been thinking about lately, okay? Um, you know, like, for example, I don't, mm, the Mike McCready thing, I don't know how limited that is. I, I think they're making as many of them as they can make. Uh, will they make it forever or for a very long time? I don't know, but it started out as a very expensive limited edition. Okay. The $50,000 uh, Greeny Les Paul started out at what, 15 of them or something, or however many there was. Um, you know, very, very interesting stuff. Um, started out very, very limited. Um, I've got a Jimmy Page Telly and it's the best sounding signature. These pickups sound fantastic. Yeah, very cool. Um, signature models are more interesting for their specs than the artist. Sometimes that, that can happen, right? Sometimes it can happen. Um, let's see. I say buy whatever you can afford or save up for it. Yeah, that's what I say too. Okay, so um, I, I like this comment, though. Who said this? Somebody said this. I want to talk about this. Bobby, thanks for this comment. I want more regular editions that are actually interesting. What, what does that mean exactly? So um, first of all, let's talk about this whole concept of money grab. Um, the idea of being in business, no matter what you're doing, um, is to make money. And the idea is to come up with ideas that will sell quickly and profitably so that you can make money. So any business that is in business is trying to put a product out in the market that people will be interested in and that they will buy. And uh, if they can figure out a way to make it interesting to a certain audience, they will. And something that I've found, especially with Dylan Talks Tone with pickups and stuff, is if we do a short run of stuff, even if it's $10 more, it's not that much more expensive. People are very interested in it because they know we're not going to make that many of them. And they know that they're just cool stuff. It's just neat stuff, right? Uh, and not everybody likes it, right? Um, sometimes we'll do a limited edition and it will completely flop. Sometimes we'll do a limited edition and I can't keep them. Uh, that's the same thing with a lot of these bigger brands. The cool part is they have a lot more um, marketing know-how than I do because they're, you know, bigger companies and they do that. So uh, I think the money grab idea is a bit of a misnomer. And I think it is uh, injecting negativity into life that doesn't need to be there. I think that there's no money grab about it. They're just trying to make money. They're just trying to come up with cool ideas to sell guitars. That's what they're doing. They're just trying to come up with cool ideas to sell guitars. So we get back to Bobby's comment about I want more cool ideas on normal guitars. So what you're saying is you're tired of the same old, same old, right? I agree, right? We, we kind of get tired of the same old, same old. However, we've brought up this a couple times in the last couple weeks. 
that the most popular guitars right now are Gibson SGs, Gibson Les Pauls, Fender Ultra, whatever, you know, the Fender American, whatever. Those are the most popular guitars. The most traditional versions, the newest, most, they're the newest versions of the most traditional guitars are the most popular right now. That is what is trending. So guitar players say they want something new and different, but they don't buy something new and different. Okay. But you and I both know because we're here and we're talking about this, that we are tired of the same old, same old. Well, everybody wants to take the face off of a big corporation, but I know people that work in Gibson and I know people that work at Fender and they're people and they're just like me and you, and they, um, get bored too. And they want to try new stuff. Um, the custom shop's always doing crazy stuff. You know, the Gibson custom shop's always doing crazy stuff. I've got a friend who designs pickups over there. I've got another friend at uh, Fender who paints. They're always trying to do crazy stuff. So uh, they're trying to ex experiment too because the people that are selling the stuff get bored too. So they're like, what's the coolest next idea that we can come up with? We can't make the guitar the shape of a Kramer Destroyer because nobody's going to buy it. We can't actually change the guitar because nobody will buy it. As much as everybody says, I want something new and different, they don't actually want something new and different. They just want something a little different, something a little special, something a little unique, maybe limited. You see what I'm saying? This is actually, actually, every time they do something new and different, people complain about it. That's, you're exactly right. Um, let's see. Has anyone tried those super expensive Optima made in Germany strings? Nope, I have not. Um... I think money grab has a negative connotation. I do too. I 100% do think the same thing. I'm going to super chat here. Sorry. From Van Shank Guitars, who says, hold on, let me get my very limited or my limited edition Van Shank Strat. Hey, man, there's probably one of one, right? Uh, Yeah, exactly. Remember that hideous double cut telly? I actually have a double cut telly and it's a custom one of one made by a friend of mine. And, um, and uh, yeah, I, I love it a lot. So the folks that are making this stuff, they get bored too. They want to come up with ideas because they're just people, but they know that you're not going to buy something crazy. So they just change it a little bit and they make it special and they might make it limited because people like limited stuff. People want to be a little different, you know? And sometimes we get tired of wanting to be different by just saying, oh, my pit guard's a different color than your pit guard, because that's what happens, right? Um, I mean, the reason I like pink guitars is because nobody else has them. Well, I mean, I like the color pink too, but I also like it because it's just different. I think it's cool. You know, my pink Paisley uh, Challenger by Texas Toast Guitars is my favorite guitar right now because it's just so unique and so cool. But that's not a mainstream guitar yet because it's different. So people don't actually want uh, something that's totally different and they could get some carves in the Les Paul and then that wouldn't be legacy enough probably. Yeah, I mean, you, you could change stuff, right? But that's not really what it's about. It's, uh, oh, here's an interesting comment. The novelty of an attraction of a guitar that exists only in a certain space and time I'm on a kick of looking up Japanese uh, Matsumoko LP Orville LPS. Oh, LP. Yeah. Like the old Japanese stuff. So yeah. So finding things that belonged or existed in a certain space and time to collect. I get that. I do that too. Um, with other stuff, not guitar stuff, but other things. Um, so here's the problem though. I mentioned it briefly with my pickup business because we make pickups. And if we come out with a limited edition, um, we take on a risk. The same thing with Gibson, the same thing with Fender, the same thing with PRS. 
all of those brands, when they do a limited edition special run thing, they take on a risk because uh, we'll get into the, the, there's various things that happen here because they say, okay, we're going to do this crazy thing or it's a little bit different or it's very limited. Um, and we're only going to do this many of them. And if they don't sell or they're not profitable in some way, which means they don't sell, then they've risked and lost. And a company can't do that. They cannot do that. Um, that's something that just isn't supposed to happen. They make a bunch of LE stuff that flops. Um, then they're just stuck with it, you know? So anybody that takes, and this is something that's hard for people to, who don't run businesses, don't understand, but anybody who takes a financial risk should be rewarded for that risk if it works. Okay. So anytime you put money into something as an investment and as a risk, you should be able to get some return on that. Like that's how the world works. So if you risk, you know, X amount of dollars on this much inventory to make these guitars, then those guitars, if they sell, you should be able to make some money on that. That's just kind of how that, um, that's just how that works. Um, let's see. I think all the Texas Toast guitars could, uh, of the very low production numbers. I agree. Uh, you know, um, I agree. Those are, those are really cool guitars for sure. Um, so here's the problem that people don't think about. When you do, when you do a limited run of something, $15,000 guitar, $20,000 guitar, $50,000 guitar, uh, the R&D that goes into that is actually a lot higher than you think. Um, I can speak more accurately from, well, there's a couple of areas that I know, actually know. Um, take, for example... The, do you remember the Fender Telecaster that looked like a violin? Um, I remember when the guy who bought the wood for Fender, he called me and he told me that he was buying this wood for Fender. And it came from uh, a certain number of trees from a certain area in the world. And there was only like, I can't remember. It was like a dozen of these trees or something. There was like n very few of these trees. And these trees were known to have a particular provenance, like where they were grown and the time period and the age of them. And then they were felled and they were sitting somewhere, whatever. Anyway, there's a long story to it. But the he actually had to go to that country, get that wood, like literally physically go there and like inspect it and make sure it is what it was and all this stuff. All that stuff incurs costs, right? So then they designed that guitar and that wasn't just a Telecaster. There was a lot of design that went into that guitar. Um, so the R and D that went into it to make sure that they knew that the guitar was going to work because it wasn't just a Tele. It was this really wild design, right? Um, and crazy pickups. So they had to design crazy pickups for it. Remember them? They were, it, look it up. It's the, I don't, I don't know what it was called. It was like, it looked like a Stradivarius though. And it was made from the same wood that Stradivarius were made from. Um, super cool, super cool thing. So all that R and D stuff, uh, costs, they had to go all over the world to make this guitar, right? It wasn't, they couldn't just FedEx some maple over here and FedEx some, you know, ash over here. This was a special thing. And I think they only made 30 of them or something. So then all the costs, all the, uh, materials costs and all the R and D costs and all that stuff then does not get amortized out over a large number of units. So then the price of that unit has to go up in order to be profitable. There's also a bunch of fixed costs. Um, when it comes to the marketing side, the trademarking side, the, uh, if there, there was a bunch of, I think there was like, I don't want to speak it out of turn. I can't remember the number but I know that there was more than a few patents that came about because of that guitar. So there's all the legal costs involved in that, all those things. Um, and then when we start talking about themed stuff, uh, like let's say the, um, uh, wasn't there a Japanese Fender Stratocaster 
that was themed on a video game, I want to say, a couple of years ago. The licensing and legal fees involved with that, as well as the royalty payments that had to come out from that, as well as the licensing and legal fees that signature artists have to deal with, um, as well as all of all of that stuff. So all of those costs get rolled into every guitar that's made. But when you have more of them, because the materials are more expensive, the R&D is more expensive, and there's less guitars to build, to sell, therefore, these guitars are more expensive. So now all of a sudden you have a $15,000, $20,000, $40,000 guitar. Not to mention, there is some marketing in this. They know that these things are going to be interesting. Otherwise, they would not build them. If they were not going to be profitable and they knew that they weren't going to sell them all, they wouldn't try to build them. It's just, it just wouldn't happen. These guys are good. These people that do this stuff are good. They're way better than me at it. That's why I have some limited editions that fail every once in a while because I'm not as good at it as them. Like they are really good. They have whole teams of people that they are uh, really good. Yeah. Yuri Shishkov built those. You're right. Yep. Exactly. Um, and people say, somebody actually just said it here that the market, uh, sets the price, but that's not actually true. Um, in the secondary market, it does, but in the, for a new guitar, you set that, you set that price based on what the costs are. Um, you know that you have to have X amount of gross profit in the guitar to get an X amount of net profit out of the guitar. Every guitar is done the same way. Um, some guitar companies are better at it than others, and some guitar companies are tighter at it than others. But overall, the successful gar guitar companies and pickup companies, our prices are what they are for a reason. I mean, you know, and if I feel that, 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 that people will not be willing to pay a particular price for what I know that a pickup needs to cost for it to be profitable. I just don't make it. Filtertrons are an example of that. That's a product that I do not make because it would not be profit profitable unless I charge enough that you would not want to buy it. So I just don't make them. Um, the Aerodyne. No, that wasn't it. That was a, um, but there's ways to lose money and make money and you're describing ways to lose. I'm not though. That's the thing. When, when a limited edition comes out, they all sell out every time. They all sell out every time. Period. Every one of them. You think about all those Les Pauls that were 50 grand. They sold out in hours. All of these guitars that people talk crap about sell out in hours. Not days, not weeks, most of the time, hours. Like literally as fast as it, people find out about it. There are billions of people in the world. And there's, you know, 600 people or 1,000 people or a couple thousand people in your Facebook group uh, talking crap about this guitar. They're not in the customer um, pool. They're not, they're, not, they're not the audience for these guitars anyway. The audience for these guitars are uh, getting phone calls from, like, for example, if, if a fancy, cool guitar comes out that's 15 grand, uh, and you are a person who is likely to buy said guitar, okay, not just some jamoke on the internet who, you know, complains about everything, but a person who is likely to spend 15000 I know a lot of people like this, who would spend fifteen grand on a guitar, um, chances are, You'll get a call from somebody like Baxter at Casino Guitars and be like, hey, we've got this guitar coming next week. I think you would like it. And some people will say, okay, just, yeah, just get me one. I don't even need to see it. And they'll just buy it. Those people are out there. And we might not be those people because we are not in a position to be those people, but those people are out there. Um, and, and they keep that whole side of the business rolling and they are out there. When I was doing work with some pretty interesting guitar brands uh, over the last couple of years, I was always amazed by the demand for guitars that cost more than $10,000. It is ridiculous. And 
it's mostly um well there's a, a big market for it in the united states but uh japan is huge high-end guitar uh the high-end guitar market is massive in japan it is massive in germany uh it's massive in china china is massive like not for like i'm not talking about political stuff i'm talking about rich people in china wanting to buy expensive stuff um it's big in australia um it's big in south america it's big everywhere uh so you know these um you know these things are are they're making they're making it um those limited thousand dollar pickups are still available yeah Sometimes you don't get every idea right. Okay, so how do we fix it? All right, what what actually? Here's the real reason why these things are amazing and why they're cool. First of all, um, in most other, well, most other interests that I have, so I'm just going to tell you. Most other interests I have are not like guitar players. Um, where everybody's like, I'm looking for the cheapest thing. I think that guitar is too expensive, blah, blah, blah. Most other, most other interests that I have are not like that. Um, when I see a $10,000 Machia fountain pen, I don't think that's stupid. They'll never sell those, blah, blah, blah. I think... Wow, there's some dude somewhere in Japan spending hours and hours and hours working on that thing. That is really cool. I'm not going to buy it, but that is very cool. Uh, do I think it's worth ten thousand dollars? It's not worth ten thousand dollars to me. That's why I'm not buying it. Like I'm not in a position to. I don't care to. But wow, is that cool? Um, in the car hobby, same thing. Um, you know, nobody says, oh. I'm not going to have, we all had freaking Lamborghinis and stuff on our walls when we were kids. Uh, you know, we were all, we thought, how many of us have Lamborghinis now? Well, we thought they were cool or whatever, you know, whatever car it was, you know, F1 or whatever. Um, and I'm dating myself with that, but you, you know what I'm saying? That, that's, that's the kind of thing. In the pocket knife world, you know, I watch every pocket knife video on the internets, um, all the super cool pro tech stuff that comes out for blade show, you know, that's like $6,000 for a pocket knife. It's so cool. I'm not going to buy it, but it's cool. It's really cool. Guitar people are the only people I know who are like the same thing with guns. I have normal priced firearms. I do not have a, you know, I don't have a six thousand dollar or an eight thousand dollar nineteen eleven. I, I would really love one, but I don't have one. But I think they're cool, and I still watch the video, and I think they're cool. And I tell my friends, "Hey, dude, did you see that video? It's cool." Not, "Hey, dude, did you see that stupid guitar? It's super expensive." Blah 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 blah. All hateful. No, no, absolutely not. So, here's why uh, I think that these things are cool, and what they are actually really good for they're good for the brand they're good for uh the the trickle down r d somebody said bobby said earlier that he wanted to see more normal guitars with cool ideas this is where they come from these fifteen thousand dollar twenty thousand dollar thirty thousand dollar guitars it's just like any other business this is where they come from the most expensive guitars these ideas come and they trickle down this is why we have a nitrocellulose relic guitar that's done very well for the money and what it costs for under $2,000 that you can buy now. That Mike McCready Strat is freaking amazing. It's really good. Is it as good as a custom shop? No, absolutely not. It's, I mean, it's, you know, like the relic in it is as good as a custom shop guitar, you know, but it's really good. It's for what it is. It's really good. It has trickled down. And it has maintained a price point that makes sense with the work and the components that are in it. You may not agree with that, but when you really look at the guitar, it, it, it is. Um, this Dave Grohl thing right here that I've got, it's $12.99 or whatever. It's worth every penny. It's worth 
every penny of that. I don't care if it says Epiphone on the peghead, that guitar is a $1,299 guitar. End of story. There is no, there is no, oh, Gibson, whatever. Mm -mm. It's still an Epiphone. It ain't a Gibson. Spoiler alert. But it is a very good Epiphone. Because these things have trickled down. And now we have a normal price guitar, $12.99. Normal price guitar. And I know that's hard for some people to wrap their heads around in 2024. Mostly us older folks who know what inflation is. But this guitar right back here for $12.99 is worth every penny. It's a fantastic instrument and it's a normal price guitar that has the trickle down stuff from the most expensive guitars. It's got Mallory caps. It's got CTS pots. It's got Gibson pickups. It's got all the stuff. It's really good. That guitar would not have happened if we did not have the $15,000 version of it that sold out in two seconds and is doing three times as much uh, as what they've cost new on the secondary market. That guitar right there, and I'm going to spoiler alerting on the Monday video. I say this in the Monday's video, but Gibson told me to say this because it's like the biggest thing. Um, that guitar is the number one most requested signature model of all time. The DG335. Mostly, I think, because it's a Trini Lopez. It, that's the other thing. It's another way to get a Trini Lopez for $12.99. It's really cool, right? Uh, did you just predict a $600 Epi Theodore? No, it's not going to be $600. It's going to be $14. Because that's what guitars cost now. Um, the people that think that that we still should have a $600 guitar just because they, you need to just wake up and learn and, and figure it out. It's 2024, man. The $600 guitar that is as good as a Gibson doesn't exist anymore. It doesn't. It just doesn't. But brand aware stuff, all these ideas is the reason why all this stuff is amazing. Because even if the press is bad, even if you go and say, I hate Dave Grohl, I don't know why people hate Dave Grohl, but he's, I think he's awesome. But, I, you know, he doesn't, this person doesn't deserve blah, blah, blah. That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard too. Um, but doesn't matter how negative or positive you are, the brand is being talked about. They already know, and this is the interesting thing, and this is why I wish regular guitar players in forums would wake up and figure it out is that while you're talking crap, somebody at Gibson is already know, they already know, or Fender or PRS, it's all the brands, it's not just Gibson. They already know, well, it doesn't matter what anybody says because we've got these 50 guitars for 50 grand a piece. They're gonna sell out in two seconds. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a $3,200 version of it with Gibson, uh, kind of like they did with the, the greeny thing. And we're going to sell those as fast as we can make them, okay? Which makes sense. The $3,200, $3,199, that one makes sense because that's what all the signature model Les Pauls are. Makes sense. So they're going to sell those as fast as they can make them. And then we're going to take an Epiphone one, but we're not going to make it the cheap one. We're going to make it a really good one, and we're going to shoot the middle, and it's going to be 1500 bucks. And people are going to freak out because they don't think an Epiphone should cost $1,500, but this is 2024. And that guitar is going to be good, and it's going to be special, and they're going to sell as many of them as they can make. Meanwhile, everybody's talking crap about them aren't the people that were going to buy them anyway. You are never going to buy one of those if you're talking crap about it. You're not even the person they're looking for, because they already found the people that they're looking for. But what you do is you get everybody else noticing that these things are out there and they just keep selling them out. It's genius. It's how marketing works. Negative press is good press too. You know, all the same. Uh, 
I don't want a Gibby. I want an Epi version for six bills. You won't find one. They don't even make a regular Epiphone Les Paul for $600 anymore. They don't. <laughs> Why complain about companies making products that people want as money grabs? Y'all ain't out there working for free, are you? Fair point, sir. Fair point. That's what I think, too. I don't work for free. But I'm not trying to take food out of people's mouths either. You know? But it's just an interesting thing to like sit and talk about and think about because... Yeah. Let's see. Is it just me or is the audio cutting out here and there? Interesting, really? Hmm. I don't know why it would be. The only thing I could think of is maybe it was clipping a little bit. I don't know. It shouldn't be. We should be pretty clean. I would be grateful to have one, both one Gibson, let's see, one, both Gibson and Epiphone are out of my, yeah. Uh, dude is right. Nothing is for free. You know, and here's the thing. Nothing is worth it to you if you don't put the money out. If you don't think a thing is worth it, if you don't think the fruit of the looms with the little thicker waistband are worth the extra buck and a half, then it's not worth it. And you don't want to spend the extra buck and a half. There's nothing wrong with that. I, you know, I, I think that guitar players get way hung up on, what they think a guitar should be worth. It doesn't matter what it's worth. This is what it costs. End of story. They're not going to make it cheaper just because you think it should be cheaper. They're not going to do that. Nobody's going to do that. I'm not going to mark my pickups off 50% just because you don't want to spend the money. Nobody does it. The gas station doesn't do it. The electric company doesn't do it. My electric company doesn't do it. So I can't do it. It's just the way life is. And there's no money grab about any of this. It's all uh, how do we figure out a way to make products that people like. And we have to be able to make them in a way that people are, they're appealing to people without changing them too much. You know? Um, and here's the thing. I'll, the 335 is an excellent example. I've always wanted a Trini Lopez. And when... Uh, that I that's the only one I've ever wanted. I didn't want a 335 because I didn't want the 335. I don't like F holes. I actually don't like the shape of F holes. I think they look dumb. It's just kind of my thing. I'm not really into them. Um, there's a couple of guitars that I would own with F holes, but not a 335. So I've always wanted to train Lopez, but they're always out of my reach. Um, for one reason or another. And when the Dave Grohl one came out, I was like, oh, that's cool because maybe they'll make like a $3,000 version that I could probably save up and get. Well, they never did. It was only a custom shop one. So now, like this is the perfect example of a guitar that I've always, 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 always wanted, but could never get until they did it this way. But the, it had to go through this like, what, 15 or 15 year trickle down effect to get to the point where there was one that I could, could finally get. Um, and it's worth it to me. I mean, a $6,500 one, one would be, would be worth it to me, but I also have to like buy paint for my living room and food and stuff. So, you know, there's, there's things. If anybody has any guitar related questions, uh, you can put them in there with a bunch of question marks in front of them, or you can use a super chat too. And we'll chat about that stuff for a few minutes as well. I don't like limited editions, but I like that companies at least try to make what people want. Yeah. I think it's neat. 
I think when people, when guitar companies do this kind of stuff, I think it's, uh, it helps everything. Here's the other thing. It gives you an idea like, oh, well, if they can do that, would they do this? Right? Like, because let's face it, uh, because we are so traditional as guitar players, many of us have zero imagination. I did a survey, uh, last week because we're going to do speaking of limited edition stuff we're going to do an exclusive cable with runway audio so it's going to be a dylan talks tone exclusive cable with runway audio and um i I let the audience pick the color everybody wanted gray come on man there's like snake skin and checker and like all this other stuff and then gray i want a gray like come on are you serious but until you see something different sometimes we don't um, we don't realize, oh, wait a minute. I could get a 335 that looks like a Trini Lopez. Oh, now I want that. I'm going to wait for that. You know what I mean? Um, and I think that's cool. Same thing with a lot of the te- Fender Telly stuff, like, uh, Fender Tellys and Strats, like, um, you know, the Corey Wong thing is cool cause it's little, uh, which is kind of weird, but cool. The, um, a lot of those signature strats come with combinations that you don't normally think of because an artist was like, this is what I want. Uh, I think that's great. And it gives us an idea of something that we might want. Question, are the pickups in the DG335 going to stay or is there a swap coming up? I don't know the answer to that question. I have not played it enough yet. Um, yeah, I don't know. $800 in house paint and supplies. Let me tell you what. I painted two rooms, cost me 600 bucks. Paint is expensive. I used to own homes. I went five years without owning a home. Bought a home last month. Holy crap, stuff is more expensive than it used to be. Uh, I have spent more money at Home Depot and Lowe's than any other place in the last couple. Uh, I cannot even tell you. It's like, holy smokes, I forgot. Uh, so yeah, paint is expensive. <laughs> no, we didn't paint two rooms. We painted one, two, three. We painted three rooms, 600 bucks. Ridiculous. Oh uh, man. Yeah. Reality check for sure. Black is a way better color than gray. Not for a cable. That's boring. Having an artist, an artist associated doesn't appeal to me and neither does a $1,300 Epiphone that's made in China. Well, you do you boo. I mean, that's cool. I dig it. I dig it. Yeah. If you're trying to do house paint that like paints in relatively realistic number of coats, it's 40, 50 bucks a gallon. It's ridiculous. I remember when I was painting cars and I could get auto paint for that. Let's see. We don't want, wouldn't do coily cables. The cap, the capacitance is too high. They suck too much tone. Um, So I I wouldn't do a coily cable. The stuff we're using um, from Runway Audio is freaking amazing. You can actually go to runwayaudio.com, and if you use Dylan Talks Tone, you get 10% off. Um, But, yeah. In my area, a one-bedroom apartment is $1,900 a month. Um, My last apartment was more than that. Yeah. It's it's expensive. Um, Life is expensive. And I think when we look at a, like an item that we don't even need to own, like a guitar, um, we forget that they need to get more expensive too. Yep. Can you explain about how they paint guitars? Um, yeah, I mean, a little bit. Basically, there's a sealer that goes uh, on the wood. That Well, there's a grain fill first. Um, and then 
there's a sealer that goes on and then there's sanding. There's lots of sanding. So grain fill, sand. Sealer, sand. Color, sometimes sand. Uh, more color. And then paint. But a lot of the bigger places use, uh, and then clear, a lot of the bigger places use robots to do it now. Um, but the, the smaller, you know, places they do, they do it by hand still. Yeah. And I mean, you know, people are talking about economics a lot and stuff and, and it makes sense. Right. But everything gets more expensive. Toys get more expensive too. Uh, everything does. It's kind of the way it is. Huh? Um, let's see. No guitars do not need to get more expensive. Well, if you have a way, uh, with the rising costs of everything, that goes into a guitar to keep that guitar at the same price that I would suggest you start a guitar company. But I would like to see where you are in five years. Um, some companies use nitrocellulose and some companies use polyurethane. I have two American made strats with paint drips on the body horn. I would have returned those. Just return them. Um, Weapons Man mentions used guitars. I, I do agree. I think the used market's falling out. I think the new, uh, I don't buy used guitars really. Um, but I, I do. I watched the used guitar market, and I do think that it's starting to fall. The only reason I don't buy used stuff is because sometimes I don't keep it. Um, you know, because I'm, I've got a little different situation here with the channel. So, you know, we'll buy a guitar, we'll use it for a while, we'll sell it. So I like to buy new stuff because then when one of you ends up with it, you know what you're getting, and I feel better about you ending up with what you're getting. <laughs> um, so... You know, that's the only reason I don't buy, I don't buy used stuff just because I know that it may go on to a new home at some point. I never understood the hype for nitro poly just feels so much better. See, what's funny about that, uh, I feel completely the opposite. I feel like poly, uh, polyurethane feels like plastic. Um, that's my number one main gripe with Epiphones is they just feel like a plastic guitar to me. Um, I like a nitrocellulose finish on a lot of guitars, not on every guitar, but, and it also depends, I guess, how it's done too. My, um, my silver sky is polyurethane body and nitrocellulose neck. And that guitar feels fine, but it's the way they did it. I don't like super shiny. I don't like it to be that plasticky feeling, which is the way Epiphones feel. Um, but at the same time, um, some people can't deal with nitrocellulose either. I have a couple of friends who can't really, that well, they don't like playing nitrocellulose guitars because their body chemistry like eats it up, like it softens it. Cause you know, nitrocellulose never really gets totally hard. And so it'll, like their body chemistry will soften it up and the guitar feels sticky. So I know some folks like that, that don't, that don't like it for sure. So it, it there is a reason why some people do and some people don't. I totally get that you would feel differently than me because, yeah, we might just completely, um, you know, have poly almost feels, uh, almost always feels sticky to me. Yeah. So that's what I'm saying. I think every person is different and you just kind of, um, you know, you like that. I, that, that runs that I run into that with, with like in the pocket knife side of my life too. A lot of people will like particular types of material like G10 or Micarta. And I, I don't like Micarta that much um, because of the way it feels. I just, I would rather have 
titanium or aluminum. And some folks don't like um, in the fountain pen, like in the fountain pen side of stuff. Uh, some folks don't like this part to be smooth, and some part people don't like any kind of um, texture right here. You know, it's just a tactile thing, right? Like if it just feels weird, because this is the way I feel about it. If the guitar doesn't look good or feel good, you're not going to play it well. So those things have to matter. And that's why that poly and nitro stuff matters so much, right? Because if, if it just doesn't feel good or, or, you know, if you just don't like it, you're not going to like it. You're not going to play it well. Poly is the same stuff they use to make that plastic pack. It's not true, actually, but that's funny. Um. That is really funny. Some people go through strings because they have excessive corrosive. Oh, dude, I have my friend named my friend Taylor. Uh, he plays in Nashville a bunch and uh, he lives here, though. And I swear to you, um, if I let him play my guitar for five minutes, I have to change the strings. He like rusts them out like completely like. I'm not kidding. If, if we're sitting around and he's like, hey, let me try, you know, hey, you got a new guitar, let me try it. And he'll sit around and play it. He's really good. And he'll sit around and play it, or I'll let him play it for a song during a gig or something. I get it back, have to change the strings. One song. It's kind of funny. Lacquer age is better, yeah. I agree. I agree. A piece of wood covered in paint feels plastic. It does. It can. It definitely can. It definitely can. Yeah. It, it just, it's just the way it depends on the app. Like I said, it depends on the application. Um, Epiphones to me are the worst about it. Uh, some of the fenders too, uh, like the, some of the squires and stuff. I think it just depends. It depends though. You know, it just depends how it's applied. I think that's the thing. I, I think there's people make such blanket statements about this stuff all the time. Like nitro, nitro is better and poly sucks. And it, it's, but it's not because they're not, it, there's no standard for any of this. Right. So for example, a nitrocellulose finish is actually thicker than a modern polyester uh, polyester finish that is on many guitars. So I have, for example, I have a brand new, um, my Texas Toast guitar with the fabric top has a polyester finish on it. It is thinner than the nitrocellulose finish on my Gibson. I know that for sure because I know both people that painted both of those guitars and I know how the finish went on. The build that you have to get out of nitrocellulose to make it look smooth and then cut it back down and make it smooth is much higher. Um, and the filler that you have to use, like the woody wood filler, there's more. I mean, it's just, there's just more on the guitar. Now, you know, we've all seen the videos of people where you can like razor blade. That's a different problem. During that time period, uh, the EPA was, uh, I remember because I was painting cars, the EPA was uh, dealing with um, the VOC content of paint, which basically, long and the short of it, meant that when you painted something, only a certain amount of particulate could go into the air, a percentage of the par of particulate that went onto the car or the whatever you're painting could go into the air. And they were trying to minimize that. So they were changing formulations of paints. This is why you were having problems and they were doing some water-based stuff. They were doing some stuff with sealers. Remember all the Chevy pickups where the, the white paint like flaked off and you could see the primer underneath? That was a result of that. Um, a lot of lacquer checking happened because of that in that time period um, in the early 80s uh, when they were just going over to urethane because they didn't know what they were doing. And, they were, and, and so uh, there was a lot of build in a lot of finishes because they were basically hammering the finish onto the guitar so that it wouldn't go in the air basically. Uh, and it was thicker. And so, uh, and the other thing is the more material they put on the guitar, the less they have to sand it. So it's cheaper 
labor wise to pile material on a guitar than sand it a bunch of times because you have less humans having to touch it. So there's all kinds of reasons, but they're not the same reasons every time. So if you were to say nitrous cellulose is better and urethane sucks, it's not true because first of all, we're not in 1985 anymore. Uh, 2023. Um, I mean, I have a, a breed love acoustic guitar with a urethane finish and I have Martin with a nitrous cellulose finish and you cannot tell the difference between the thickness of the finish because they are both the same thickness. Um, you know, we're talking a couple of mils, you know, probably six, maybe five, something like that. So, which is thinner than nitrous allos. So yeah, a lot of that stuff is audio cut out again. What the heck is going on with that? I don't know. Yeah. There's all kinds of neat stuff with all that. But that's what I'm saying. You can't make blanket statements about any of this stuff because you have to actually drill in and learn about it to make an informed decision on it. Otherwise, you know, you're just talking out the side of your head like everybody else in the Facebook group who doesn't know what they're talking about. So, you know, that's why we hang out. Water-based stuff was terrible. I was in the business at that time myself. And what's really funny though, 3J, is that they make some really good water-based stuff now. I've actually have a couple of, well, I don't have them anymore. I had a couple of guitars painted with water base and it was great. Um, the stuff was awesome, but yes, back then it sucked. It was terrible. Uh, yeah, absolutely. More layers would chip less. No, that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is uh, they they will, if you put heavier build on a guitar, you don't have to sand it as much. Um, I don't, I think it's very underestimated the amount of sanding that it takes to get a guitar smooth. Hours and hours and hours um, for a normal person. Uh, but hours and hours and hours, man hours from beginning to to. Uh, fin um, beginning to end on an electric guitar, lots of sanding. Any way you can minimize the amount of sanding that's done saves money. It's easier to put a bunch of build on the guitar with a finish than sand. Awesome. You guys, this has been super fun. Thanks for hanging out. Just buy cool stuff. Uh, do me a favor and hit the subscribe button and the like button. Thanks for hanging out on the Saturday night special limited edition <laughs> of our podcast because we're not going to do it on Tuesday because I'm going to be in Colorado, but we are going to have a bunch of content coming out next week uh, that I hope you will dig. So thanks for hanging out. And uh, I guess we will see you on Monday with a video about the Dave Grohl 335.